week prior, I set on a four-day excursion to Homer, Alaska to photograph baby sea otters. And each day I'd see this amazing raptor flying down the spit, the short-eared owl. And just so you know, it is my favorite and most sought-after bird to find in the wild to photograph. Now, the last day when I was heading out of Homer on a very snowy day, there it was, just perched on a large piece of driftwood off the spit in the snow, just a gorgeous scene. But unluckily, I had a little bit of time to flip around and get a few shots before it flew off into the snow and just disappeared into the white. Right then, I knew where I was going to be for the following week, what my sole focus would be. I was going to set aside five days to see if I could capture these amazing raptors hunting along the Homer spit. The following week, I made my way back down along the Turning Arm from Anchorage to the Turning and Pass and down the Kenai Peninsula and my eventual destination, the Homer Spit. The Spit is a four and a half mile long piece of land jutting out into Ketchmuck Bay, and it's also home to the Homer Boat Harbor. The harbor contains both deep and shallow water docks and serves as about 1,500 or so commercial and pleasure boats at its summer peak. And after about 20 minutes of looking, I spotted the first owl. It was not in the most scenic of perches, is what usually happens with most owl encounters. It was on top of an old tow vehicle and perched atop the crane. It was exciting nonetheless and gave me hope that the raptors were still hunting along the spit and I might just be able to catch them hunting and feeding for this week. It hung around the tow truck for quite a while and then it flew off out of reach close to sunset. And it set the end to a great day of travel through the Kenai Peninsula. The next morning was a gorgeous but blustery and cold day along the spit. My drive on the spit was halted by a surreal scene. A moose walking down the middle of the main road leading to the spit. This fine gentleman was walking casually down the street and only stopped momentarily to check out a jogger. And then he finally made his way off the road instead of heading down to the spit. Only in Alaska. With the wind up this day, the owls would work their way inland and hunt around the airport grounds where I could see them but just couldn't get close enough to really capture them on video and stills. I wasn't having much luck until later in the day when the wind died down. I caught a glimpse of a dark shape down from the road in the grass. And sure enough, it was a short-eared owl. I patiently made my way around the owl to set up and hoped he wouldn't fly off. And I was rewarded with his lighter colored shorter owl staying in the perch amongst the grass. He was perched on an old wooden beach chair and just surveying the beach. I kept a decent distance from the owl to make sure it was comfortable and changed my angle a couple of times to line up a few different compositions. It's incredible sitting with these owls watching their behavior. After a good amount of time, it finally decided to try a couple more perches and finally flew off where I couldn't see anymore behind a bend in the terrain. And I didn't see it or any other owl for the rest of the evening. Again, I was left with a great feeling that this was probably been a week that was going to be one for the books, spending time with these amazing raptors. And again, an end to a great day. The next morning as I headed towards the spit in Ketchmuck Bay, it was another amazing sunrise. As I started to head down one of the side roads for heading down to the spit to look at a couple owl hot spots, I ran to another one of these morning commuters again, a mom and her one-year-old calf, just walking in the middle of the road again. Once the road was clear again, I made my way onto the spit. Shortly, I caught the telltale flash with a short-eared owl wing and farther down the spit. So I got set up where I thought they were headed and got lucky. What's cool about these owls is they hunt during the day and they're very, very inquisitive. So if you get set up a lot of time, they'll come to you and check you out and circle you. And that was the case with this owl.
The slider colored shorty circled me and then landed on a wooden pile among some marine equipment. But then this guy showed up and disturbed the peace. It was a juvenile eagle. He came in to land very, very close to this shorty. And as he lands, you can see the owl flying away in the distance. The owl made its way farther down the spit and landed on a new perch. But not long after that, the same juvenile eagle made its way to the perch close by. And he repeated this a couple times before the owl decided it was time to head out for the morning. And it was for me also. After grabbing some lunch, my hunt was on again. And not long into my search, I spotted the flash of a wing again. And this time I saw two flashes along the same low grass high tidal flats that I've been working. I made my way towards the back of the flats where the owls were hunting. I stopped way short of their hunting orbit just to see how they were reacting to me. And in a short amount of time, one of the owls headed my way, circled me, and then headed past me to hunt more. I lost sight of the second owl as my attention got split between the two owls and I never saw it again. But the owl that had checked me out started to hunt again. It would circle me, then it would perch, and it kept repeating this behavior. I saw it get a couple voles, but it was too far away and too much obstruction between me and the owl with the grass. But after a while, my patience and giving the owl a large buffer zone finally was rewarded. The owl dropped down in a vole not far from me, and he flew to a perch fairly close to me. And even luckier, my field of view was unobstructed as he started to enjoy his catch. To some, it may seem gruesome to see one animal eat another, but to me, it's just incredible to see these owls during a counter most of us never get a chance to see. After finishing his feast and resting for a bit, the shorty resumed hunting. It caught one more vole and landed not too far from me and seemed to be more watchful of the air and its surroundings rather than the things in the grass. I slowly made my way close to the owl, but not close enough to disturb it and found a stump to sit on and just watch it. After about 30 minutes or so, the owl hopped onto the ground and into the grass. I moved a little bit closer off to the side to get a little more better look at the owl and, and not as much grass to me and it. And it would watch me and then it'd watch the air and back and forth. And eventually it kind of stalked off and walked with, put some more grass between me and it. I knew at this point what I was trying to do is trying to roost. So I got up and left the cute little raptor to its afternoon siesta. Again, an amazing and lucky encounter I was so grateful to have and be able to experience. And one of the best parts of this encounter was I had learned more about how these owls are working the spit. During this encounter, I'd seen two more owls fly over me down farther to the flats and lay in land in the grass, but at the same time, this owl was trying to roost. So I had a better picture now of their hunting and resting cycles. They seem to do an early morning hunt, then sometimes a midday hunt, and then an evening hunt, and then they would go to roost in between all those different times. So now I had a better understanding of where and when I might see them depending on the strength of the wind and the time of the day. Learning about the seasonal ranges and what you're looking for, what the animal eats and sleeps and what those type of habits are, the mating patterns and times, they all help you locate and learn more about the subject you're trying to photograph. And then getting out in the field to observe the rest of the puzzle will help you achieve success. And that was working for me during this encounter by spending a lot more time and watching these owls more than trying to get up and photograph them and film them.
So with this info, I was hoping it was going to help me for the rest of the remaining days, I had to search for these really cool raptors. Later that evening, I put all that knowledge to work, and sure enough, not long after, I spotted a shorty working the flat. But unluckily, this guy was too far out in his hunting pattern where I just couldn't stay with him before I lost all the light. Again, I called it a night with a huge smile in my heart after another amazing day and close encounters with those owls. The next morning was another stunning sunrise, but this day, the wind had really decided to show up. From past experience, I knew that the owls would probably not be on the flats or probably more inland. And for the first time, I didn't run to any of the morning commuters hogging the roadway. My morning search turned up nothing close enough to photograph besides a darker colored shorty resting amongst some small boats stored along the Homer Spit. So with all the wind and the shorties not really cooperating and kind of being way too far away from me, I decided to kind of change subjects that I was after for that afternoon. And my new subject was sandpipers. So this time of year, they hang out in huge flocks around the harbor and they try to stay out of the wind and out of the surf for a lot of times. So I had a good idea where they may be. And sure enough, as I worked around the harbor where the leeway with the wind was, I found them. These guys can be fairly tolerant if you're slow and watch what you do and make sure the bird doesn't get real nervous as you kind of slowly work your way up to them. So I made my way down to the edge of the harbor and got down on the ground near them and inched my way closer and closer when I was able to. These guys are so fun to watch and listen to. Such cool coos and whistles. And how they tuck into each other to sleep and stand on one leg and hop around. And then the others in that flock will fly in and fly out. And then more of them will dip in the water to bathe. It's just so much fun. The wind was still pretty high during my evening search and not much showed up really besides a young cow eating some pine boughs. And I was sitting around the airport area looking out across the big field where these guys will hang out when it's real windy. I spotted a couple flashes of wings and with the binoculars I could kind of see them flying around the hangars and all that fun stuff and feeding. But then after a bit, one of them did what all owls love to do to us photographers, they landed on a metal fence. At the edge of not being able to take a good picture, but still you could get a picture. But of course, I had to take some pictures and some video and snap a couple images. It's fun to watch the wind ruffle the feathers of this owl and from time to time it reposition to block the wind. It's another end to a good day. Not as amazing as the past day, but still a great time to spend with these sandpipers and this windswept shorty. The fourth morning was another breathtaking sunrise. And for the second day in a row, no moose commuters. But there was another moose morning surprise. A young moose was down on the ice in the bay. It was a very interesting scene with the golden and orange morning light, with the young moose on the ice silhouetted with the mountain and the glaciers across Ketchmuck Bay. It was a bit surreal. morning search is about the same as the other days. I see the quick circle of flights of the shorties from landing from post to post, but no long stays on the perches or no real hunting activity. A bit later in the morning, I worked my way to one of the larger flats and I spotted a flash of wings and wasn't too far from me this time out on the flats. After a short walk, I set up close to this one's hunting pattern. I got the familiar fly-by, check out the goofy looking guy in the field pattern. And then it went back to hunting not too far away from me. I saw it grab a couple of voles along the way, but they were just too far out for me to get any video or footage of it. 
It eventually landed on a driftwood perch not too far from me and it kept watching the ground intently. And after a bit, it dropped down off that log and I could tell it had hit something, a vole or a mouse or something. And a bit later, rather than eating it there, it flew to a perch a little bit farther away. It was at that too far, but still kind of close range. And I slowly started to close the distance, but this little shorty must have thought I wanted his vol for myself. Two times in a row, it'd fly to the next perch. This time it perched on a nice flat stump and never was I very close when it flew off. So the behavior was more of a cautious thing than pressure thing. What I noticed is there was a cedar tree just a little bit off to the right that was kind of between me and this shorter owl. So I moved to the right a little bit and then kind of closed the distance getting up close to that tree. A couple times I'd peek a little bit around the tree and sure enough, the owl was still sitting there. When I finally got up close to the cedar tree and looked again and poked my lens to the tree to get a couple shots, the owl looked at me and wasn't worried about me, kind of preened a little bit. And I noticed one thing, I didn't see the vole anymore. So I thought, oh, he ate the vole, it was gone. So I decided to lay on the ground next to the trail there and see if I get an unobstructed view, which I could once I finally laid down. And now it was a very good distance for the encounter just to capture this owl. The owl just watched me for a bit and didn't seem concerned with me. And then after a bit, it reached between his feet under his tail and pulled out the vole. I guess he decided I wasn't gonna get his vole, wasn't gonna eat it and take it from him. And then he started methodically, started eating his catch very slowly. Even after it finished the meal, it would just preen and watch me in the sky for a good while. And after a good bit, it flew directly over me onto a driftwood perch really close behind me. I just rolled over and sat and watched it for a decent amount of time before it flew to a farther perch and then up into the air to hunt again. By this time, I was fairly hungry, a bit cold, a little bit tired. It'd been a long day, about three or four hours out walking this spit and spending time with this shorty. So I got off off my perch and started to walk out and partially following the same owl back all the way to my truck as he seemed to be heading the same way I was headed. Along the trip further up from me, it caught another vole and it ate it on the same snow trail that I was walking on. It was kind of cool. After a little bit of walking back towards my truck and this shorter owl in front of me kind of keeping pace with me ahead of me, Another shorty flew by me, a little darker morph, and it went down into the grass. And I knew from the past two days experience that the owls probably be soon to get ready to go do their afternoon siestas again. So I was content and slowly just meandered my way out to call it an afternoon. The owl had been following, circled me one more time before I got to my truck then flew off further down the spit. Just an amazing, great, fantastic morning. That afternoon I ran with some friends and had a late lunch and offloaded all the images and video off the camera. And this evening, I didn't see much activity on the spit with the owls and ended up seeing them inland a little bit more, but again, too far out for any camera work. So I ended up taking my mother, who was still down visiting with me, down to see the Seafarers Memorial, and it's a very gorgeous and somber memorial. And after that, we just headed for a good dinner and called it a day. So on the last day that I was in Homer, it was only a half day as the back half of the day was gonna be a travel day back to Anchorage. It was another great sunrise and fairly quickly, I found two different owls working their way around the flats. 
Neither was hunting, but both rather just perched and checking things out. So I sat and observed their behavior and snapped off some decent light and comp images. There was a flurry actually a little bit after that, of three owls flying by each other and kind of actually wanting to fight or play or something. But the problem I had was I was too close to the owls, too much lens, and I could only capture one owl at a time. I love to spend more time hanging out with these owls in the Homer Spit, but it was time to get back home and process all that I'd seen and capture this amazing excursion in my head and also the images and the videos that I'd captured. This one was an amazing time and I learned a lot about these gorgeous raptors. Those ears, how they stand up and how they search the ground looking for prey and look at the skies when they're perched to make sure there's nothing's gonna come down and get them. And when you look into those eyes, those owls, when they're flying by and turn and look at you, it's just incredible and breathtaking. I'm really looking forward to next winter and I'm hopefully it's a good year for these shorties again. If you've been enjoying this video and you like the content on the channel so far, subscribe, like, and share, and all those fun things. And leave me a comment. I love the comments that come on this channel. And if you want to help us out monetarily, you can think about joining the channel. It's as low as a dollar a month. And that just helps us buy more gear, gas money, lodging, things like that when it comes to these things like in Homer or Seward or in the interior. Um, again, guys, thanks for watching. You guys have been awesome. I love this community. And I enjoy making these videos. So until the next time, get out there and go run that shutter.